to invite one of my favorite journalists to the stage. All right. Now, do we need a clear stage? Is this all going to be all right, Lucian? It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Okay. Sometimes he likes the whole stage to himself. You know, he's, he's a big presence. He's not a big guy, but he's a big presence. Okay. He's a big media presence. This guy walking in. Just walking into the White House press room a couple weeks ago, and they lost their minds from simply stepping foot in the room. And all he did in there was write what happened. He took pictures, he took videos, he did live streaming, he talked about what happened in the press club. What, 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 a, what a thought. What a thought, right? To actually report objectively on what's going on. No, no, no. Well, from one, well, yeah, that's what real news is, right? So one of my favorite journalists from one of my favorite sites, Gateway Pundit, ladies and gentlemen, the White House correspondent for Gateway Pundit, Lucian Winters. So, uh, thank you all for having me. Um, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, now, you know, I was going to stand up here. I was going to tear up these uh, bullet points and speak from the heart. Uh, I am a little tired today, so I will stick to the bullet points. Thank you. <laughs> um, now, okay, before, we're ha we are obviously having a rally against um, leftist violence, political violence, and it is only genuine um, and appropriate for us to acknowledge the violence that, that we uh, conservatives have committed uh, before we get into all of this. So, now, Gateway Pundit has been accused of a uh, uh, lack of fact-checking in the past. And to, to honor that, just so I, I'm speaking the truth here, Cassandra Fairbanks from Big League Politics will be my live fact checker. Guys, <laughs> okay. we'll be Hi, fact checking. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Hottie! So, uh, okay, as, as a uh, white male Christian conservative, Woo! I do completely disavow uh, some of the tactics that not only we use in getting President Trump elected, you know, they've been asking us to disavow this stuff for ages. I'm going to do it here publicly for all of you. Um, but not only uh, since he was elected or before he was elected, but uh, but post. So, okay. I would like, absolutely, this is disgusting. Um, one of our tactics for getting Trump uh, elected apparently was um, spray painting vote Trump on black Baptist churches uh, and then burning them down. <laughs> that was actually a black liberal. Oh, okay. Ah. Maybe maybe not that one. Um, I I will absolutely uh, disavow um, whoever whoever uh, what is it burnt the uh, this Texas uh, family's minivan wrote uh, <coughs> or, uh, N word lover. I'm not gonna say it because the the MSM would love that. Um, N word lover uh, and uh, burn everything to the ground. That was awful of us to do. That was the husband. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so maybe maybe we didn't do that one. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay, the Jewish man who went on the news, he woke up, he just woke up, Jewish guy waking up in the morning, and there are swastikas uh, that are, for whatever reason, spray-painted on his property. Uh, that was awful of us to do. He did it himself, and we're not even sure if he's actually Jewish. Okay, the guy apparently isn't Jewish, and he did it himself. Uh, yikes, okay. Let's see here. Well, we absolute, as conservatives, we are against um, that that uh, terrible act where somebody took a, a iron menorah, turned it into a swastika on this Jewish fr uh, family's front lawn. Disgusting. That was three liberal kids who were playing a prank. Well, okay. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, well, okay, you know, Linda Sarsour, the, the uh, liberal sweetheart, but she, you know, she adequately pointed out that uh, a, a white, ma cis white male <laughs> uh, conservative <laughs> um, brutally beat a Muslim woman, uh, this woman, Warsum, uh, just because she was Muslim, she was hanging out being Muslim, bru brutally beaten by a cis white man. That was actually a Hispanic woman who was trying to stop her from beating her child. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's see here. Um, okay, another big one. All the JCC bomb threats that we've been continuously calling in uh, for us to, to keep attacking Jewish American citizens. I mean, I, that really is disgusting. Uh, we need to stop doing that. Yeah, that was a black liberal journalist from The Intercept who was a Bernie supporter and was mad at his Jewish ex-girlfriend. 
Well, you know, I, I uh, disavow all this conser uh, conservative violence, I guess, that we're committing, and I think we should stop. Uh, yeah, we, need to, we just need to stop, right? Fake news. It's only coming from the left. Stand corrected. So folks, I have, I, I do have so a little bit of breaking news. I do have a little bit of breaking news. Uh, I got a message just now from Mr. Roger Stone, a text message on the phone. Um, Roger Stone sends his regrets. He's not able to appear with us today because of security threats. He's actually receiving active death threats to him where he is today. I'm not gonna say where he is today, but he's actually receiving death threats today. And because of that, his security detail has sequestered him away for the day. So we're gonna hopefully try to get him. I'm gonna ask if he can do a video. I'll post that on my Twitter. I'll post it to the Facebook group for this page because I know he really, really wanted to be here. Uh, Roger Stone, we, we appreciate so much everything he's done for this country, everything he's done for our president. And we, he needs to be safe. We need it. We need it. Let's hear it for Roger Stone. We're going to need him for 2020, right? Well, here's somebody else we're going to need for 2020. If you guys have been following Twitter, if you guys have been following Periscope, this guy has been tearing up the charts, literally tearing up the charts. Uh, he's the uh, conservative Ali. If you see him on Twitter, it's actually just at A-L-I, at, at Ali. I have no idea how he got that. Did you have to, like, like some drug dealer? Or was that? I'm in cahoots with uh, Jack. In cahoots with Jack Dorsey. All right, we'll have to talk. But, guys, really, I want you to follow him. He's actually had about 10, what, 15 years now, almost, political experience. So a guy kind of like me with a, a recovering political operative who works in Republican politics and then kind of gave it up because they realized that the Republicans and the Democrats were pretty much one and the same, the uniparty, uh, two-party duopoly that was running Washington, and we decided that we needed something new and we needed President Trump to come in and change it. Ladies and gentlemen, Ali. Woo! Give me a choo-choo if you're still on the Trump train. All right, so the media's here. There's a black guy with a microphone. Antifa, if you're going to bum rush the stage, go ahead and do it now. We don't want America knowing that there are black Americans, there are people of color that support this president. We're making our politics sovereign. So today's speakers have done a really good job of, uh, you know, talking about political violence and today. And I'm going to say something that might be a little bit controversial, but my Periscope... Uh, uh, my Periscope audience knows I like to be philosophical. So we're going to talk about actual, the history of violence, and uh, let me get my notes here in the shade. We're going to talk about the history of violence and, uh, and politics. So indulge me if you will. Our system of checks and balances, continuity in government, and peaceful change is one that was built by brave women, smart men, and the blood of patriots. They opted out of a political system and instead for war because they understood something. John Locke wrote in his second treatise of government that we had a moral right, he even argued a moral obligation to overthrow our oppressors and our tyrants when they committed political violence or lobbied against our natural rights. See, I want us to understand where we might actually go tomorrow by understanding where we've been today or where we've been in our, in our past. So the media chooses to hide these stories like Eric Clayton. How many people know about the Eric Clayton story? You have a liberal professor yeah, bike lock guy. You have a liberal professor trying to beat to death a Trump supporter who's not wearing any Trump gear, simply recording like so many of you guys. How many of you people remember when Gabby Giffords was shot? And the double and the triple and the quadruple coverage she got, but Steve Scalise can't get that uh, same coverage. <laughs> yeah, let's just jam out. Sounds like some 80s stuff. Getting played off, right? <laughs> Deep state. It's a deep state. So again, I just want us to understand. Yesterday's occupiers are today's resistors, and those might be tomorrow's elected Democrats. Now that they've had a media that's turned a blind eye to Eric Clayton, or gives less coverage to the C. Scalise, imagine what they are going to do to us. See, my message isn't here for the Rally for Peace, hashtag Rally for Peace if you're on Twitter. My message is to the left. 
So if the media is listening, left, you don't want to start a war that we're going to have to end because we understand that our founding fathers, that John Locke and major philosophers have said, when you turn into tyrants, when you take our, our natural rights, when you commit political violence, we will opt out of politics. We will opt in for war. This is only my speech. Uh, don't associate with any other speakers. But, you know, don't start a war that we have to end. That's right. I appreciate your time. Choo-choo! Yeah! yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have...